Okay. Uh, that's not the issue. All right. Okay. Right. So. Um, and then, if I may add just one final thing. Sure. And the final piece of proposed language that we have is with regards to whether or not the officer had a reasonable belief, you are not to assume that his belief was reasonable simply based on his testimony alone. That's the major concern that we have with the limited language that's offered by the state here. Is the concern is that they're going to argue the officer testified that he had a reasonable belief, and that's the end of the story, and that the jury might make that inference, which we think would be inappropriate. They can't base that simply on the testimony of the officer. They have to consider all the evidence. Okay, Mr. Williams, what says the state? follow after the definition of offering in the resisting with violence instruction. An investigation is the lawful execution of a legal duty. Next paragraph. A detention or arrest is the lawful execution of a legal duty if an officer reasonably believes a crime has occurred or is occurring. In determining the reasonableness of the officer's belief, you may consider all of the facts and circumstances presented to the officer at the time. Now, tell me again what is the, ne the additional language the defense wants? With regard to whether or not the officer had a reasonable belief, you are not to assume that the belief was reasonable solely based on the officer's testimony. Okay, and the state objects to that because you. The other statement, sentence that we would ask that the court include would be, you should also consider any evidence that would cast doubt on the reasonableness of that belief. Okay, well that goes back to what I said earlier, is that there is a standard instruction on the believability of witness testimony, and I think that uh, that instruction addresses that issue, so I'm not going to give that one. Okay, let me do this. Let me include what I've got. Let me print out copies for you, and then maybe when we all have a printed copy, we can look at it. It might uh, be a little bit uh, more helpful to us in finalizing these. Um, now, here's the question. I have that language in the resisting with violence and resisting without violence. And 
instructions. With regard to battery on a law enforcement officer, the element is that David Cruz or Charles Mays was engaged in the lawful performance of his duties when the battery was committed. Do you want me to include the same language in that instruction? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Well, let me include it. We may need to just modify a couple of words to be consistent with the language of that element. Okay, while that is printing, were there any objections to the verdict form that I provided everyone yesterday? No objection from the defense, Your Honor. Okay, and then with regard to closing arguments, um, both the state and the defense indicated that they're going to split up the arguments between lawyers. That's fine. Um, Mr. Um, Williams, who will be doing the first argument and then the rebuttal? I'll give the first argument. Okay. And then uh, from the defense side, who will be splitting up the arguments and who will be speaking first? Your Honor, uh, I will be speaking first for probably the first hour. Uh, okay. Mr. Smith will speak for about 20 minutes, and then I will uh, include the case. Okay. okay. So um, who, who from the defense team will be making any objections during the state's closings? That would be me. Okay, and then who from the state's team will be making any objection during the uh, defense closing? Okay.
we have the statement that an investigation is the lawful execution of a legal duty, should we put in there that an investigation by an officer is the lawful execution of a legal duty? Yes, sir. Let's go back to uh, the instruction just for a moment for battery and law enforcement officer in this additional language. What says the defense on the state's objection to including that in the battery instruction? I mean, I think certainly the state has offered a hypothetical where it might not be applicable, but I think given the facts and circumstances and issues of this case, it's not going to so mislead the jury that it would be inappropriate to include it. What's necessary? So it's a partial mistake. I don't understand the argument. It's misleading because it's not accurate. They don't have the performance of a legal duty. The batter is lawful. No, that's a misstatement of what I was saying, sir. What I was saying, Your Honor, is the facts and circumstances of this case, my understanding is that the battery, whether there was an alleged battery or not, relates to whether or not the officers were engaged in the lawful execution of a legal duty. The facts and, the facts and circumstances of this case do not involve an officer simply standing around and then suddenly being attacked by Mr. Carter. So I think given the unique facts of this case, giving that particular instruction would be appropriate. Okay, well. It is my understanding that in the viewing the facts in the light most favorable to the state, that the battery to Officer Mays occurred when Mr. Carter punched him in the chest while they were out on Orange Avenue when Mr. Carter was, they were struggling with Mr. Carter after he sat down. Okay. And that the battery on Officer Cruz occurred when? Okay, so then, uh, then we don't need any information about whether an investigation is the lawful execution of a legal duty because clearly at that point we had moved past the time of any investigation. Yes, sir. According, under the facts of this case, would everybody agree with that? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so I think we should take that out. So then the only question is whether we leave in this information about the officer's belief as it relates to the lawful execution of a legal duty.
Okay, so I'm going to sustain the state's objection to including that language because the element is different. in battery on a law enforcement officer than it is in, in resisting. Your Honor, may the defense be heard on that? Please? Yes. Your Honor, the position is is that there's actually almost two separate incidents here. The uh, alleged battery on a law enforcement officer, officer Cruz, occurred at the club. Right. And then there was a run. Then the other battery happened at the curb, and a totally new set of circumstances occurred. Right. So uh, I think that, you know, you can't limit it to say it's a, it's a different scenario versus the other ones, and that that type of instruction should be. In no, 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 no. What I'm saying is that the element for battery on a law enforcement officer is not that the officer was engaged in the lawful execution of a legal duty. That's not the element for battery. That's different under the case law from that element in a resisting charge, because those are two separate crimes. The, the law in each of them is different. So that, I'm going to sustain the state's objection, and we won't have any additional language in the battery charge. You will still be permitted to argue that the law enforcement officers were not engaged in the lawful performance of their legal duty. You can still argue that. That's a, an element that the state has to prove. But that whether they are engaged in the lawful performance of their duty has nothing to do with the reasonableness of um, the officer's belief in determining whether to detain or arrest someone in terms of execution of a legal duty for resisting. Okay. All right. So. Other than the language that I've included in there um, that would read an investigation by an officer is the lawful execution of a legal duty in the following paragraph in count one and count four. I understand that the defense wants additional information. I've sustained the state's objection as to that. But as to what I've got here right now, does the defense have any further discussion on that? No, Your Honor. Anything else from the state? Yes, Your Honor. Yesterday when the court asked us which legal duties were they serving, we indicated investigation, arrest, and detention, and protection of the public or persons. Okay. So the language will, I think, accounts one and three. Four. One and four, I apologize. Is uh, the protection of the public or persons of the lawful execution of the Period. Unless there's an objection, and if there is, I have additional language. Okay, what says the defense? No objection to that, Your Honor. Okay, no objection to just period. The protection of the public or persons is a lawful execution of a legal duty, period. Or do you want the additional language that he suggested yesterday, which reads, if a police officer believes the public or persons were in danger or at risk of danger? Just period. We don't want the additional language. You're okay with that? Okay. So I will include that then after the paragraph on a detention or arrest. standard instructions. I know we talked about these briefly yesterday, but over the course of the evening, did counsel see any issues with any of the other standard instructions? Nothing from the defense, Your Honor.
state or the defense have any objection to me providing the jury instructions, the written set of instructions to the jurors before your closing arguments so that they can, if you're going to argue from any of the instructions, have a copy of that? No, Your Honor. You know, I would just suggest sometimes when that's done, the jurors, they're not paying attention to the argument. So right. if you do identify a specific instruction and ask them, you can look at it. I just don't want the jurors to be so preoccupied with the instructions during closing sure. argument. Sure. Well, well if we part, see of, that. Yeah, part of my instruction before we begin closing arguments is that I direct them to pay attention to the argument. So I'll add that in there. Okay. Thank you. As the court's aware, there's a charge against Mr. Carter concerning battery on Joanna Speo, and uh, the evidence in this case shows that she did not come in and testify. Right. Uh, the defendant intends on making a, a negative inference about her not being here and uh, say that the state did not bring her based on the fact that she would present te testimony detrimental or in contradiction to that particular charge. Is that uh, appropriate under the Halliburton case for you to make that argument? Uh, yes, I looked at the Halliburton case, and it actually refers to a case that the court will, uh, in the Halliburton case, it refers to a case called Martinez, which says if you can develop a special relationship between the victim, between the witness and the, uh, the person who didn't call them, then there are reasonable circumstances for that to happen. Okay. And, and in the Martinez case, which is at 478 Southern 2nd, 871, and I apologize, it's a third DCA in 1985. I pulled the case uh, this morning and I didn't have any ink, ink in my cartridge to print it out, but it's 478 Southern 2nd, 871, uh, 3rd DCA. Okay, what says the state? I think Halliburton squarely addresses this issue, Judge. Right, so my understanding of the Halliburton case and that special relationship that you're talking about is that, Hall in general, Halliburton says that no party can comment on the other party's failure to call a witness when that witness is equally available to both parties. The only exception to that is if a party has a unique relationship with a witness such that the other party basically has no access to that person or no ability to call that person uh, or legally can't call that person because of some privilege, then comment can be made on that. There's been no evidence presented to me that the state is the only entity that could have brought her into court. Your Honor, can I, can I uh, discuss that with the, Your Honor and lay a foundation? Yeah. Um, as you know, we were supposed to go to trial in June, and we served Mrs. Speo and had individual service on her for the June trial. I have a copy of the affidavit of service. Right. May I approach the court? I'm, I, I don't doubt it. Okay, and then in this case, on August 8th, we began attempting to get service on her, and I have an affidavit from a process server where she was, uh, they were not able to serve her because they couldn't find her. Um, recently, uh, there's an affidavit filed by my uh, paralegal, uh, Ms. Tanya Lott, which outlined her attempts to find Mrs. Speo. Right. And, and then recently, this morning, there was an affidavit filed by the process server that he utilized all measures and means to find her. Uh, and it's laid out in his affidavit in terms of that. So uh, in terms of the equal uh, position of both of us to get him, I agree that the witness is out there. We've made every attempt to find her, number one. But number two, there is a unique relationship between the state and her. The, How is that? Well, the jury will see her name on one of the charges. They are asked to find that there was a battery again jo against Joanna Speo. She is the victim. She is the person who allegedly is saying that, has to say it was against her will. And so that is the essence of the charge, understanding that the state can move forward with battery without having the victim here. Right. But it, we made every attempt to get her. We were informed by the state that they would not be calling her, and we made every attempt to get her over the last nine days. And she's ob obviously hiding. And so the fact is, is that we believe that we've, even though she was out there, we made every attempt. And I think because of that relationship of her being the victim and being somebody who's being named in the case as a victim of a battery against our client, that we should be able to make 
the negative inference that where is she and why didn't she come and testify about the battery that occurred on her. Do you have information that the state has intentionally instructed her not to make herself available for service of process? I do not, Your Honor. Okay. So if that were the case, then I think I might agree with you. But uh, when she was under subpoena for the trial in, was it July? June. June. Okay. The trial in June was continued, I believe, at the defense request, if I recall correctly. Well, it's because there's discovery violations. Well, it was but my also request. there were other bases for that request, if I recall, in yes. light of what had occurred at the Pulse nightclub and some other things. Yes, correct. Be that as it may, based upon what I know and what's been presented to me, um, I cannot find under the law that the state has a special relationship with her such that you can make the negative inference that the state has not proven their case because they did not call that witness. So I'm going to sustain the state's objection to any argument on that. Your Honor, my present into the, the my argument the actual affidavits of service and non-service in this yeah, case? Yeah, absolutely. You can file them. Well, the, the affidavits from uh, Ms. Law and uh, the processor were already filed to court, but okay. the actual, I want the affidavit of service on Joanna Speo, which was on June 23rd, 2016, and then the uh, verified non-service from August 8th, 2016. Okay, that's fine. Yes. I'm assuming here, Your Honor, that this is the... Absolutely. Okay, I know that, well, let me ask this. Did the state uh, provide the clerk with any exhibits that were not received into evidence, that were marked for identification but not received into evidence? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so Juanita, have those been kept separately? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so everything you have over there against the wall is either state or defense exhibits that were not entered into evidence. Got it. Okay, so what's on the desk here is just everything in evidence. All right, why don't you guys just verify that, so. Don't, but if you want me to, I will. I do because I need to be focused on it. I could have sure. at, the, at, at the hour of me, I'd like to stay time warning at five minutes when I'm coming to my first hour. So, so 55, minutes. 55 minutes, okay? All I right. can do that, I Mr. One minute, please. One minute, okay. How and about the state? I never at the lab, my last 10 minutes, uh, one minute. One minute, yeah. got it. Thank okay, you. how about the state? I don't know, I'm here, thank you. Okay. All right. Yeah, we're going to take a short break, but here, let me just give um, the state and the defense, if you will uh, dispose of those previous drafts of the jury instructions. Here's one copy now for the state and the defense. Just review them again, make sure it includes everything, and we'll take a five-minute recess, then we'll start.